Hi, I'm Paris of Paris Ashley Home, and I'm going to show you how to turn your old outdated medicine cabinet into a super cute little shelf nook for all your all your nooks and crannies. All right, so let's start off. We're going to remove all of the stuff out of our medicine cabinet. Then you're going to want to unscrew these screws holding the cabinet to the studs in your wall. After you do that, you will score the edges of the cabinet because it is likely sealed with a little bit of silicone caulk. Go ahead and grab your flat bar and pry that sucker out of the wall and say goodbye to the outdated medicine cabinet. And hello to whatever you plan on building for here. I did grab my drywall knife and uh, shot back and cleaned up the edges for when I tile the backside of this little nook and for when we add our new shelving unit in here. And I am tiling my little nook, but you could add shiplap, you could just caulk it and paint it, you could do whatever you want in your little nook, but this is what I'm doing and I absolutely love how this is looking so far. You will want to measure the width and height and depth of your cabinet and then pick out wood. I went with poplar wood, uh, one by fours, and that was big enough for my nook. Uh, your measurements may be different than mine, so I did not provide my measurements, but um, I did cut the width first and then subtracted the width from the height so if it was 10 inches wide and 10 inches tall the side pieces would be um, eight and a half inches tall because this is three quarter inches a one by four is actually three quarter inch by three and a half I know wood measurements are so very confusing it's never what you expect it to actually be so always double check your measurements before you cut and measure anything Anyways, uh, so I cut my two top pieces. I did go up and check to make sure that they fit before I cut the side pieces. Um, I didn't show that just because, you know, cameras running up and downstairs. It's a lot. Uh, so I cut up my two side pieces. After I did this, I did go and make sure and do a dry fit. Once I made sure everything fit correct, I sanded everything down as you should when you are staining wood. Next, it was time to assemble. So I used wood glue, my corner clamps, and my brad nailer. I will be using my pin nailer on part of this as well, so I would recommend having a pin nailer and a brad nailer. If you do not have either, that's okay. I'm sure wood glue would have done just fine on this, knowing that this will never be moving inside of that little cabinet nook. So after I got my corner clamps all nice and secure, I added some brad nails in each of the corners. Um, I did this on the outside knowing that uh, this part of the cabinet would not be shown. This will be inside the cabinet that you'll never see. Next, I grab my one by twos. Again, in poplar, I cut my first uh, mitered angle for the face frame of this little nook. I just propped it right up and used a pencil and drew a line. Instead of measuring, um, I just feel sometimes it's more accurate when I just use a pencil on that exact spot and know exactly where I need to cut. I then repeat this process on the additional three pieces of the face frame. And before we assemble, we need to sand all of these pieces so nice and smooth. Now we are ready to assemble the face frame. I use my corner clamps again, and then I use some wood glue. Sorry that I do not have the camera high enough. I will fix it in about five seconds. Uh, so I use a little bit of wood glue on the corners, clamp it together, use an additional clamp uh, to make sure it is flat. Then I stand it up and I add a brad nail as well into each of these corners just to make sure it is extra sturdy. I went with brad instead of pin just to make sure that this uh, again is extra sturdy doesn't fall apart on the face frame um, i will be adding a little bit of wood filler before i stain and since this is the outer edge it won't be as seen as the face frame next we're going to attach the face frame to the unit i did add some wood glue before placing it on and i used my clamps around the entire thing to make sure it was nice and secure i then grabbed my pin nailer and put nails around the entire thing pin nails are so so magical they are as small as a pinhead so you can't even see them so I had a whole bunch here. So let's go to the next morning. <sighs> nice and sunny. Let's remove this. Oh, it's so beautiful and it's sturdy and it's together. Wonderful. All right, so it's time to wood fill in all of the crevices because when I stain this, I want it to be as perfect as possible. Um, after I wood fill, I wait until it is about 85% dry and then I sand to make sure that some of the sawdust from the poplar goes into the wood filler and then that will help it be more stainable. Next, I prepared my shelves. Uh, I guess I did not film myself cutting them, but it is just the width of the unit, so it uh, shouldn't be too complicated. I did assemble with some wood glue and some pin nails as well, um, and then I wood filled the creases as well. And now to assemble the shelves. To get an idea of the height that I wanted for the shelves, I grabbed my dry shampoo, because what else? 
what I use to take measurements on the height of the shelf, aside from the products that I actually will be putting on this shelf. So once I got the placement of the shelf, I went ahead and added some wood glue to both of the sides. Then I placed my shelf inside the unit. I got my tape measure out to make sure that the height was the same on both sides. I went ahead and got my clamps and held it together, tipped it up and added some brad nails to secure this together. I then repeated the process with the second shelf, this time adding the clamps in, in the spot. I used my rubber mallet to get it in there, checked with my tape measure to make sure that it was perfect. After I confirmed that the shelf was perfect, I stood back, admired my work, and secured it with some more brad nails. I did use additional wood glue in the corners just to make sure it was double secure. Then it was time to add some more wood filler to the face frame before I stained. And after I wood filled, you know what I did? I sanded and I made sure that it was perfect. So we sanded the entire thing one last time before we went to staining. I did use a 220 grit for this last sand on every corner to make sure there was no glue globs, to make sure there was no wood filler thingies, and to just make sure that it was uh, as smooth as it could possibly be before we went ahead and stained this. And before you officially stain, it is always good to do a test stain on some additional wood that you have lying around of the exact same wood. So make sure that you wood condition first and you're supposed to wait about 30 minutes. On the right piece, I did a white wash. And now I'm gonna add my early American. I immediately stain and then wipe off. I don't like it to sit on there very long. If I need it thicker, I will just add a second coat. So on the bottom of this is early American. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of special walnut to the tops. And these are two of my favorite stains. They come off so different depending on what wood you use. This one has more of a purple hue, which is weird. So once I took these inside and compared it to my tile, I decided to go ahead with early American. So let's get to staining the entire piece. So first I'm gonna wipe down the entire thing with a tack cloth. A tack cloth grabs all of the leftover dust. Then I will rub the entire thing down with a wood conditioner to make sure that the stain absorbs evenly. After I wipe with the wood conditioner, I will wipe off any excess with a lint-free terry cloth rag uh, to make sure that all absorption is even and when I add the stain, it has an even application. Next, it is time to stain after you waited your lot at 30 minutes, of course. I will apply the Early American with a lint-free towel and I will apply it on the entire thing. As soon as I am done, again, I will wipe off any excess with a lint-free terry cloth rag. Now I will say poplar is a funky wood. It is gorgeous, but different sections of it, different grains of it stain differently. So that top shelf that you see is a lot lighter than the bottom shelf because it has a different part of the poplar grain. So I will end up adding two layers to that top shelf and only one to the bottom uh, and I kind of did this with the entire thing uh, just going on how to make it look the most even. After my stain is fully dried I do add a poly top coat. I use a matte polyurethane and I'm adding three coats in between each coat I will sand with a 220. This will make it waterproof and element resistant for years to come. And after it's dry, it's time to install. And I put it in my nook. Of course, it was a little tight once it was completely installed together, but with a little tap, tap, tappy, she just slid right in. I did add a little bit of silicone caulk around the edges just to make sure it was secure. I did not caulk any of the inseams. It was just too hard to get into and you never see it, so. Anyways, I am Paris of Paris Ashley Home. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please like, comment for any questions, and subscribe for more tutorials. Have a great day.